And I pay tribute, I know we all do, to all the women who came before us, who pushed the boundaries in their lifetime. And the more I've spoken about feminism, the more I have realized that fighting for women's rights has too often become synonymous with man-hating. There is one thing I know for certain. It is that this has to stop. For the record, feminism by definition is the belief that men and women should have equal rights and opportunities. It is the theory of the political, economic, and social equality of the sexes. So here I stand, one girl among many. I speak not for myself, but for those without voice can be heard. Those who have fought for their rights, their right to live in peace, their right to be treated with dignity, their right to equality of opportunity. And I pay tribute, I know we all do, to all the women who came before us, who pushed the boundaries in their lifetime so that we could be standing here today. And above all, pay tribute to the women, artists, journalists, human rights defenders, and lawyers around the world who refuse to be intimidated. The brave people who are fighting so that others, one day, will have the freedoms that we have. It isn't enough to simply talk about equality. One must believe in it. And it isn't enough to simply believe in it. One must work at it. Let us work at it together, starting now. These freedoms that we take for granted aren't guaranteed in stone. And they certainly didn't just come down to us as a gift from the heavens. Though these rights were secured through long, hard battles waged by women and men who marched and protested and made their voices heard in courtrooms and boardrooms and voting booths and the halls of Congress. And make no mistake about it, education was central to every last one of those efforts. The ability to read, write, and analyze. The confidence to stand up and demand justice and equality. The qualifications and connections to get your foot in that door and take your seat at the table. All of that starts with education. And trust me, girls around the world, they understand this. They feel it in their bones, and they will do whatever it takes to get that education. I've seen it time and time again, girls in Senegal studying at rickety desks in bare concrete classrooms, raising their hands so hard that they're almost falling out of their chairs. Girls in Cambodia who wake up hours before dawn, ride their bikes for miles just to get to school. Bangladeshi immigrant girls in the United Kingdom who study for hours every night and proudly wear their hair headscarves everywhere they go, resolutely ignoring those who would demean their religion. These girls risk everything. The rejection of their communities, the violation of their bodies, everything just to go to school each day. And then here I show up with a horde of international reporters shoving microphones in their faces. These girls don't blink. <laughs> they stand up, they look straight into those cameras, and they proudly explain who they want to be. Doctors and teachers, forces for change in their countries. What we are learning around the world is that if women are healthy and educated, their families will flourish. If women are free from violence, their families will flourish. 
If women have a chance to work and earn as full and equal partners in society, their families will flourish. And when families flourish, communities and nations do as well. That is why every woman, every man, every child, every family, and every nation on this planet does have a stake in the discussion. I have two children. I have a five-year-old son and a two-year-old daughter. I want my son to have a choice to contribute fully in the workforce or at home, and I want my daughter to have the choice to not just succeed, but to be liked for her accomplishments. That is the work before you. That is the work before all of us who have a vision of the world we want to see for our children and our grandchildren. The time is now. We must move beyond rhetoric. We must move beyond recognition of problems, to working together to have the common efforts to build that common ground we hope to see. If you choose to use your status and influence to raise your voice on behalf of those who have no voice, if you choose to identify not only with the powerful but with the powerless, if you retain the ability to imagine yourself into the lives of those who do not have your advantages, then it will not only be your proud families who celebrate your existence, but thousands and millions of people whose reality you have helped change. We do not need magic to transform our world. We carry all the power we need inside ourselves already. We have the power to imagine better. Whatever you choose, however many roads you travel, I hope that you choose not to be a lady. I hope you will find some way to break the rules and make a little trouble out there. And I hope you'll choose to make some of that trouble on behalf of women. No one can stop us. We will speak up for our rights and we will bring change through our voice. We believe in the power and the strength of our words. Our words can change the whole world because we are all together, united for the cause of education. Here, on the path of this new day, you may have the grace to look up and out and into your sister's eyes and into your brother's face, your country, and say simply, very simply, with hope. Good morning. <laughs>